I'm Mike Farrington. Welcome back to the boardroom. In this video, I'm going to be making a few ring boxes, but I'm not going to be doing it alone. So my buddy Jonathan Katz Moses of Katz Moses Woodworking wanted to pay the boardroom a visit to learn a little boardroom etiquette. We ended up deciding to do two projects together, and the first of which is we wanted to build a few ring boxes. And we also thought it would be a lot of fun if we gave the ring boxes away. So if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these boxes, leave a comment below telling us your sappy love story and why you need one of these ring boxes. And this is mostly directed towards those of you who are going to be getting engaged. But if you're celebrating an anniversary and you think one of these boxes would help display your gift, then let us know and we'll put you in the running. And there are more details in the video description below. Also in the video description, you'll find information on how to pick up one of these magnetic dovetail jigs. Jonathan was kind enough to give me a couple to test drive, and I really like them for two reasons. First, I like that it has two magnets. I think this helps hold the saw in alignment better. And second, I like that it can be used on both sides of the workpiece. This is called a fret saw. Some people call it a jeweler saw. And what I like about this particular saw is that the blade is thin enough to fit in the kerf of the Japanese style pole saws that I like to use. This is my process for cleaning the waste out between pins. I first start by roughing most of the waste out with a fret saw. And then I like to come back with a bearing guided flush trim bit to clean out the rest of the waste. And I recently picked up a new tiny flush trim bit. This one is made by Amana, and as you can see, it's about a quarter inch in diameter, and it works perfect for these tiny little dovetails. And for me, the chiseling part of cutting dovetails is the slowest part, so to be able to do this with a router is a really neat trick, and it really speeds up cutting dovetails. And after a long day of cutting dovetails and woodworking, nothing better than pizza and beer. Back at it the next day, I got started by cutting a 1 8 inch groove for the bottom and then fitting the bottoms. And here's Jonathan's process for adding a little spice to his projects. With all the joinery cut, it's time for glue up. And if you look closely, you'll notice that each of my sides is a pinboard and a tailboard. This means that it has to be glued together in two halves and then those halves have to be joined together. Now that the boxes are all glued up, it's time to fit the lids. And I'm just cutting a small rabbit. It's real easy to do on the router table by just slightly nudging the fence until there's a nice tight fit. And the lids are going to be held on with some really tiny rare earth magnets. And I got started by marking the locations as well as putting a small dimple where I wanted the holes drilled. Then I drilled the holes to the necessary depth. And to mark the location for the holes on the lid, I decided to cut the tips off of some finish nails and then just smash the lid in place. This left perfect markings for where the holes needed to be drilled in the lid. And these little magnets are two millimeters in diameter and one millimeter thick. And these little guys are held in place with a dot of super glue and I pressed three magnets into each hole. The only challenge to this process was maintaining polarity. The magnets were so small they were hard to hold and it was hard to keep track of the polarity of each magnet. One final detail, I wanted to add a small bevel to the top. Decided to go with shellac as a finish and after letting it cure I buffed it out with some steel wool and wax. Here's a quick shot of Jonathan's cameraman Mark working his magic. This kid's got a lot of talent for video. Here are a few finished shots of the two dovetail ring boxes. Overall, I think both boxes turned out pretty cool, and you know what? I had a lot of fun building mine. I also really enjoyed the challenge of cutting the teeny tiny dovetails. If you've cut dovetails before, but you haven't cut real small ones, I suggest giving it a try. It is a real fun challenge. So our original plan was to make a dovetail box each and then do a couple mitered boxes each. Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time, so I decided to just pick up making a few mitered boxes the following weekend. So I got started by milling out some lumber on my newly restored bandsaw, and if you're interested in more information about this saw, check out my channel. I've got a build video. So the first item of note when making a mitered box is you need to keep track of the parts. So as these come off the saw, I like to mark each one and make sure that they all stay together. 
A table saw sled, in my opinion, is really the only way to accurately cut real small parts like this. So here's how I go about making sure that the grain wraps nicely around the outside of a box. And the best way that I can think to describe what I'm doing is I'm making the inside of the board the outside of the board. So the resawed surface actually becomes the outside faces of the box. And as you can see, it creates a pretty nice grain match. And once I have all my pieces oriented correctly, I head over to the bandsaw and I do a rough 45 degree cut before heading over to the shooting board. I thought it would be easiest to use a shooting board to cut the miters on these box parts. So I decided to attach a small piece of MDF to my shooting board and I use some blue painters tape to shim it to make sure that it's cutting a perfect 45 degrees. One of the main benefits of using a plane to make this cut is you're not going to have any tear out or blow out which could potentially happen if you're using a table saw set at 45 degrees. And because the pieces are cut to exact length, I just plane until there's a nice sharp point at the end of each piece. Here's the finished result, a nice grain match on all four sides of the box. A couple more small details before glue up. Here I'm just running a 1 8 inch groove to set the bottom in. And next I cut a rabbit on the bottom. The bottoms on these boxes are one quarter of an inch thick and the groove that I just cut was one eighth of an inch. So I needed to cut a rabbit to make sure there was a nice fit. I wanted to sand and finish the insides of the boxes before gluing them together. And here's one of my favorite tricks and that's to use some sticky back sandpaper and my workbench as a sanding block. After sanding, I applied some wax. And one of the nice side benefits of finishing the interior of a box like this before glue up is that any glue squeeze out will just come off real easily with a chisel. And during glue up I like to have a straight reference edge. This ensures that as you fold the four pieces over, the final two will come together and be lined up perfectly. Here's a pro tip. Put some wax on your chisel before you chisel away squeeze out. And this will ensure that the glue won't stick to your nice expensive Lee Nielsen chisel. And with the pre-finished interior, the glue squeeze out comes off no problem. With the boxes drying, I turn my attention to the lids. Same as before, I cut a rabbit so there's a nice tight fit between the lid and the box. I also use the same process as before to locate where the holes go for the magnets that will hold the lid in place. Now it's time for some final surface prep. I didn't sand off the band sawn surface after making the resaw cuts earlier, so I went to the belt sander to make things go a little quicker. Here's another pro tip. On a small project like this, your second to last grit, sand against the grain to create cross grain scratches. Then on your final grit, all you need to do is remove those cross grain scratches and you have a perfect surface. And for this project, my last two grits were 220 and 320. And the last detail before finishing is to add some small chamfers. And the finish I'm going to use for these boxes is paste wax. But I'm actually going to use two different kinds of wax. The first is this really soft lemon scented paste wax, which is good for the inside because it makes it smell nice. And it's good for a first coat on the outside. And wax really is a great finish for projects that you're going to touch. Wax really has a nice feel to it. Plus, it goes on easy. Just smear on a thin coat, let it dry, and buff it off. And I like to use a toothpick to remove any excess wax on the inside corners. And for the second coat, I'm going to use Minwax Paste Finishing Wax. And I find this wax to be more dense, so it buffs up to a little higher sheen. And it dries a little harder, so I think it's a slightly more durable finish. And just as a side note, Jonathan and I also built a skateboard, or as the cool kids call it, a longboard. And as you can see here, I do not know how to ride it, but I'll have a build video out about how we built our longboards in the next couple weeks. At this point, the boxes are built, finished, and ready to go. So I turn my attention to adding some foam and felt to hold a ring safely in place. And I get started by cutting a cube of seat cushion foam and a square of felt. 
And next I use a little spray adhesive to attach the cube of foam to the square. And then I cut the corners of the felt at a 45 degree angle and this allows me to fold the felt around the sides of the foam. Well, if you've watched any of my videos up to this point, you know I like to make a song recommendation in each video. And since we're making ring boxes, and rings often have quite a bit to do with love, I thought I would recommend the song Can't Help Falling in Love by Elvis Presley. And every time I hear that song, it reminds me of my wife, which on a personal note, as of the recording of this voiceover, 1028, we've been together for 14 years. So that brings me to my question for you, the viewer. What's the song that reminds you of your significant other? If you feel like sharing, let me know in the comments section below. And for the last and final detail, I secure the foam block in place with some hot melt glue. Overall, I'm really happy with how these boxes turned out. I find it interesting how I made them all the exact same way, and yet each one is so unique and has its own personality. I was also real happy with how the ring sits in the foam block. I think it functions really well. And a special thanks to my wife for allowing me to borrow her ring for demonstration purposes. I'd also like to thank my good buddy Jonathan Katzmoses for coming out and building those dovetail boxes with me. Check out his channel. He has a really neat video on the build as well. And once again, if you're interested in the ring box giveaway, don't forget to comment below telling us why you need one of these ring boxes. Lastly, you might be wondering what I'm doing. I'm actually taking pictures for my newly started Instagram account. So if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, look me up, Mike double underscore Farrington.